don't know what's going on today. Yo, bro, uh, can I get that Sakudin 2 physical copy unopened on the low low? Man, this is a trap phone. I ain't trying to work today. Sunday, man. Hmm. What? It's time to do God's work. Wow, what a way to start a Sunday. Man, I'm skipping church just for this. Yeah, guys, that's right. We got a new trailer for a brand new Kingdom Hearts game. And it's not a spin-off this time. Well, there were a couple spin-off games announced alongside it, but they actually announced Kingdom Hearts 4. Not only that, but they showed off an amazing trailer. Now, I'm kind of going to talk about each scene step by step in the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer. So... I hope you guys enjoy it. I have some prediction and theories of my own. Take my own words and predictions and theories with a grain of salt. These are just my opinions and thoughts and just for entertainment value overall. So yeah, with that said guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing content. And we're going to get right into the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer analysis prediction and theory video. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's start it. Alright. The Lost Master Arc. So is that like the Masters of Masters who's like Luke Shu's master or whatever? It's pretty cool. Yeah, we got that, you know, usual Tetsuwa Nomura philosophical type, type stuff going on here. Some crazy over the top type stuff, which is cool and I love in my Kingdom Hearts games. Yeah, we got a Heartless portal right there. So a Heartless is going to come out of it most likely. The art resides within the soul which in turn is guided by fate to its rightful place. I should totally be an Organization 13 member. Damn, look at those sexy realistic graphics. Yeah. Check out the graphics here, bruh. Damn, that looks realistic. That does not look like Sora's in a Disney world at all. Wow, we get to see Sora's feet. It's kind of weird. He's not wearing his big shoes. That he wears in other games. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of rewind here for a sec. I meant pause here. So, as we can see, this character who I believe is named Strelitzia is explaining to Sora that he's been asleep for about seven days, and that's about the time that he arrived in this new world right here, which looks super realistic. So, if anyone remembers at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 in the DLC, uh, spoiler alert. One, two, three, okay. After fighting Yazora and once defeated by Yazora, then we all know that Yazora freezes Sora in place and explains that he's going to save Sora. So it appears that this scene that's taking place right here in the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer is seven days after Sora was defeated by Yazora and frozen in place. Now I'm going to come back to this topic a little bit later, but let's keep watching for now. Beautiful. Wow. It's, gives, it's giving me that Tokyo kind of vibe. Okay, uh, so just pause here real quick. But to you and I, it's similar to an afterworld, I suppose. Hmm. So what's Strelitzia trying to say to Sora here? Is she trying to say that both her and Sora don't really belong in this world? That maybe this is reality right here? And so my question right here, folks, is that... If this is reality, if Kingdom Hearts 4 takes place in the real world, then what world is Sora from? So does that mean that Sora himself is a fictional character, just like Donald and Goofy, and that maybe they exist inside these fictional 
and that they exist inside of these Disney movies, which explains why Sora and the rest of the gang can travel to Disney worlds. Now, how crazy would it be if Sora is running around and he sees a poster of a Disney movie and it's a character that he's met before or a world that he's already visited? And, you know, he kind of questions it like, what? Like, like, what's going on? Like, like Donald and Goofy are part of a Disney series, like a Disney movie. Wow. That's some deep stuff right there, Tetsu and Nomura. Now we know that Yazora himself explains to Sora that this isn't what he really looks like. Is he saying that that's how he just looks in this inside of this fictional world? So how does he look in the real world, perhaps then? Even Sora himself looks different, or at least different than how he usually looks. He has a more realistic look right here. So is that how Sora would look if he existed in reality? And we all know that Yazora is based off a video game series. So isn't it kind of weird that Sora can go inside of Yazora's video game, which itself exists inside of a fictional world, which is based on reality? Wow, this stuff kind of blows my mind right here. But you know what I mean? And now, let's just say that perhaps if you die inside of the fictional world, and then, you know, you enter this world which is based on reality itself, does that mean that we're going to see Master Ericus and Master Xehanort themselves? Because if we go back to this very scene from the trailer in Kingdom Hearts 4, Strelitzia is explaining to Sora that, but for you and I, it's similar to an afterworld, I suppose. So if this new world, which is named Quadratum, which is based on reality, is supposed to reflect the afterlife for both Sora and Strelitzia, who I actually think come from the same worlds, which is the fictional world, then that theory wouldn't be too far off that, that Master Ericus and Master Xehanort would reappear in this world. After all, they both died at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, didn't they? And so if this is supposed to represent the afterlife, then I don't think my theory would be too far off. But again, that's just a theory. I also believe that Quadratrum is also the masters of Master's home world and that maybe and that maybe Luke Shu and all of the other organization 13 members which are shown off in this trailer perhaps come from this world. Now I also believe that Quadratrum is going to be freely explorable here because quote Square Enix themselves explained that Quadratrum is an expansive city set in a gorgeous realistic world unlike anything ever seen before in the Kingdom Hearts series. Wow now that is truly fascinating. So if Quadratrum is the reality apologies I meant real world then what about the Disney worlds and the fictional worlds will we still have access to the Disney worlds through this through Quadratrum? Or perhaps maybe we'll be playing as say a second character who is still in Sora's fictional world. So perhaps will we be playing as Riku and traveling to these Disney themed worlds and perhaps playing as Sora who is stuck in the in the real world? Well it's still too early to guess. But I have a hunch that maybe the Disney fictional characters will will somehow find their way to Quadratrum which is based on, on the real world. And so Maybe we'll have this huge, expansive, explorable city to explore, which reminds me of Tokyo. And, you know, we run into Disney characters and perhaps we got to find a way back home into our own world, which is the fictional world. Who knows? That's just a prediction that I have. Now, in this last scene here, we see that Donald and Goofy are looking for Sora and they're wondering where he is. Now, perhaps will Donald and Goofy find their own way to Quadrum itself? Now, Goofy says here, I don't know, but I sure hope he can help. Well, who is he? I am assuming that this is none other than Hades himself from the Disney Hercules series. Now, if this is true, how is Hades going to play into the overall plot here? Is it because that is it because that Quadrum itself represents the afterlife for these fictional characters that exist in a different world or realm separate to that of Quadratum which exists in reality itself and that Hades is after all the lord of the underworld where the dead go after they die so does he know a way to enter Quadratum in itself because he is Lord Hades the god of death well I hope we find out soon the battle system looks fantastic in this trailer by the way. I hope that this is the real deal. Uh, I'm not going to try to get my hopes too high for Kingdom Hearts 4 even though I am super hyped but 
you know, Kingdom Hearts let me down before. I'm specifically talking about Kingdom Hearts 3 here. And even though it was a decent experience, that game could have been way, way better. So here's hoping that, you know, they finally do justice with Kingdom Hearts 4. I can't wait to see what this game is all about and to see what else Square Enix reveals in the near future. But for sure, you can bet that Rogue Spirit is going to keep his eyes on this one for sure. So that's my overall opinion on the trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4. And these are my overall prediction and theories that I have about the game and its story. And you know what? It's always just fun kind of talking about these wonderful new amazing games coming out and, you know, kind of predicting what's going on inside of these amazing trailers for these upcoming games and titles just trying to figure out what's going on inside of these trailers here and i had a blast doing this video so with all that said guys that's all the time i have for today thank you for supporting me each and every one of you i am truly humbled by you all and i truly appreciate it i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a fantastic week i will catch you guys on the next episode of rogue spirit reviews peace out everybody Yeah! 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 Yeah!